Ilong County in northeastern Taiwan, bounded by the Pacific Ocean in the east and mountains in the west, occupies the fertile Lanyang Plain and is home to a rich natural and cultural heritage. Tourists stream in on weekends and holidays. They look to partake in Ilan's slower, simpler pace of life. This is Ilan today. But in the mid-20th century, in the last year of the Second World War, Ilan's mountains, seas, and plains were darkened by conflict as bombers attacked in wave after wave from the east. Taiwan, the southernmost colony of pre-war Japan, was by mid-1944 within reach of Allied forces. Worrisome rumors of an American landing spread like wildfire. Many saw Ilan with its long sandy coast and convenience, both to the provincial capital of Taihoku and to the Japanese home islands, as a natural target for invasion. In response, the Japanese military in Ilan expanded airfields, built hardened gun emplacements and fortifications, and mobilized the local population for war. Although the invasion never came, by the time the war had ended, too many young kamikaze pilots had taken off from Ilan and sacrificed their lives in suicide attacks on the U.S. fleet. We stopped going to school after the Pacific War broke out. Then the American air raid started. We secondary school kids were mobilized as student soldiers. We dug trenches and air raid shelters. They trained us to use artillery against the invaders, their tanks. Actually, the Japanese deceived us. Unless you could get up real close to those tanks, you'd be dead already. The kamikaze pilots, I'm not sure how they really felt, but they appeared excited and happy, had handsome powdered faces. They were also young, went into battle as soon as they learned to fly. Their planes had just enough gas to reach the enemy. They weren't coming back anyway, no need to carry extra fuel. The Japanese military fought until there was nothing left. We knew then that the war is lost. Over two days in late September 2019, nearly 100 county residents converged on Ilan's Zhuangwei coast in the Jiaoxi Highlands to tour the vestiges of the county's Second World War military fortifications. During this activity, the county government research team announced their findings on the historical World War II military sites in the Lanyang region and led the participants on a site inspection. Although most in this group were born after the Japanese colonial period and the Second World War, they have all lived in the shadow of these wartime relics, which extend from Elon's sea coast into its mountains. Why does Elon have so many of these sites? And why were they built where they are? To answer these questions, we need to start from Elon's three long-gone airfields and the Pacific War during World War II. In 1935, the 40th year of Japan's colonial rule in Taiwan, the island's government general held the Taiwan Exposition in Taihoku to showcase to the world the power and beneficence of the modern Japanese Empire. Work started that same year on Elon's first aerodrome, which began normal operations in June of the following year. Known as Giran North Aerodrome, it served as a domestic passenger, cargo, and postal airport and provided defensive air support for Matsuyama Aerodrome in nearby Tohoku. The site of this former aerodrome is now located in Ilan City's Jinliojian <laughs> military base. The July 15, 1936 edition of the Taiwan Nichi Nichi Shinpo reported the arrival in Ilan of Prefectural Governor Imagawa Fukashi to open the new Giran Aerodrome. Taiwan, he stated, is the key southern link in our empire's aviation network and, as such, 
must be ready to meet all potential aviation needs. Glowing reports on the new Giran Aerodrome continued as operations began. However, less than four months later, chronic problems at the airfield were delaying and canceling flights. Elon's rainy climate and soft soils, coupled with poor airfield drainage systems, lay at the heart of the problem. To make necessary improvements, Giran Airfield closed just six months after opening. It wouldn't open again to passenger aircraft for another two years. During the final decade of Japanese colonial rule, the town of Giran was a railway and aviation hub with a thriving industry, social stability, and good education and employment prospects. My name is Ying Mao Li, Li Ying Bo in Taiwanese, and I'm an Elan local. I was born during the Japanese colonial period. That was before the Second Sino Japanese War, or the Shina Jihan, as the Japanese called it. The streets were peaceful, it was all so peaceful. Although we weren't a wealthy household, my dad enrolled me in preschool. Back then, Ilan had only one preschool. There was one class for Japanese kids and one for Taiwanese. I studied there for two years until I was eight and old enough for public primary school. Those two years of preschool, I can say, were the happiest, most precious days of my life. Our family was fairly well off. We had a business that sold spectacles and clocks, as well as metal cabinets, bicycles and the like. Quite a range of goods. Our Hayashiya store was pretty well known. Music halls, the post office, the local administrative office, the power company, they were all our customers. In terms of income, well, the family did well. Back then air raids weren't a thing. Anytime Shina Jihen was mentioned, Japan was all victory, victory. In 1937, as major renovations were underway at Giran Aerodrome, the Sino-Japanese War began in earnest, across the Taiwan Strait on the Chinese mainland. In 1939, the unfolding conflicts in Asia and Europe spiraled into a new global conflagration, the Second World War. Invading China and expanding into Southeast Asia and the Pacific all came in the name of creating Dayatoa Kyoiken, the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. The war's early years had little effect on Taiwan, beyond the reports of Japan's seemingly endless victories in newspapers, radio broadcasts, newsreels, and schools. Taiwan at this time was blissfully untouched by the conflict. However, to shore up loyalty to the empire, colonial authorities ordered Taiwanese to adopt Japanese names, communicate in Japanese, and worship at Shinto shrines under increasingly restrictive Kominka Kyoku policies. My Japanese name was Inoue Hideo. My father told me that, although I now had a Japanese name, I should retain something from our family heritage. So he kept the Chinese character Ying, which is Hide in Japanese. Our surname became Inoue, and the second character in my first name, O, means brave. Adopting a Japanese name had its benefits. Firstly, our children had a better chance for academic advancement, and secondly, during rationing, having a Japanese name got you a slightly larger rice quota. Dad likely did it to give his son access to a better education and to make it easier down the road. He gave me a Japanese name first to help me fit in with Japanese society. <laughs> Oh, 
金を向けつゆれぎなき我が日本の誇りなれ This song, back then in our shop, we sold records. This sold like hotcakes. Schools bought the record from us to teach students to sing it. Said it was a good song. Singing the patriotic march, like I just said, told us that to build a better Asia, we all needed to work together and had to fully support our military and government. In December 1941, Japan's unprovoked attack on the U.S. naval station at Pearl Harbor marked the start of the Pacific War. Japan then swept across Southeast Asia all the way to Australia's doorstep. Its broad swath of conquered Asian and Pacific territories created the absolute defense zone that protected Japan and secured supply lines. The United States counterattack in 1942 and naval victory at Midway that June began the slow, steady shift in advantage away from Japan. From 1943, the U.S. led island hopping strategy of the Allies targeted the capture of strategic Japanese held islands to push Japan's defense zone steadily back and hopefully bring the war to a quick end. As U.S. forces pressed westward, Japan beefed up military readiness in eastern Taiwan. New airfields were built along Taiwan's east coast under the Preparedness No. 10 plan, approved in early 1944. This led to construction of Giran South Aerodrome, which today lies within Elon Science Park. Today, the old aerodrome weather station, a county historical site, as well as the historical Octagon Command Center and 10 hardened airplane bunkers, survive as reminders of Giran South Aerodrome. Giran South Aerodrome is etched deeply into the memories of many long term residents. Elon teenagers were regularly conscripted to work on public projects, of which South Giran Aerodrome featured prominently. After Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, we were always being sent here and there, all over the place. No time for study. There wasn't enough labor to build fortifications. So, what did they do? They rounded up secondary students from all over Taiwan and put them up at schools in Ilan. Even prisoners were brought into work. The completion of Giran South was top priority. 30 ton wheels, cement, round, pulled by muscle power alone. They were rolled in to compact the ground on the runway. Cement was poured afterward. The cemented areas were where planes would land and take off. Giran South Aerodrome was not an easy accomplishment. It was truly hard labor. Of course, we knew it would be a military airport. Definitely a military airport. I also assembled dummy planes made of bamboo. They gave us photographs and dimensions. We cut bamboo strips. And carefully wove everything together. Even propellers look like the real thing, same size and shape. After they were finished, we'd camouflage them with leaves and line them up next to the runway. They looked real from the sky. US planes would shoot them up, just like that. The goal was to make the Americans expend their ammunition. Next, we would roll our planes out of the bamboo forest and take off to engage the enemy. 
In June 1944, the 10th United States Army Command drafted Operation Causeway, a plan to invade Taiwan and Shaman with half a million soldiers, effectively cutting Japan off from key resource supplies and paving the way for an invasion of Japan. During the detailed planning for Operation Causeway, Saipan Island fell to the Allies, with suicidal bonsai resistance resulting in over 30,000 deaths. Ownership of Saipan finally put American bombers within reach of the Philippines, Taiwan, Ryukyu Islands, and the Japanese homeland. The war was now within reach of Taiwan. To prevent an Allied landing, Japan enacted the Taiwan Fortification Plan, which called for four new fortresses and ten new fortified positions in Ilan. The fortresses were to be built along the coastline and foothills north of the Lanyang River, in Daifuku, Kokan, Mount Ato, and Mount Neyuan to provide protective cover for the aerodromes. Fortified positions at Ushu Harbor, Mount Jinian, Ulaokang, Beifangao, and elsewhere were arrayed to strengthen overall Nanyang Plain defense. The solid fortifications and other works of reinforced concrete built across Ceylon's mountains, lowland plain, and seacoast today comprise the county's pervasive Second World War military heritage. When the county government and research team compared their survey findings with known military heritage sites and Japanese military records, they found most of them matched, but with some discrepancies. However, what most surprised the group was the remarkably good condition of many of the war-era batteries and tunnels. The Daifuku Coastal Battery Complex in Zhongwei Township is a three-story above and below ground structure. It housed five machine gun emplacements, two rapid fire cannon emplacements, a north-south octagonal observation tower, and an underground corridor network linking it to other nearby batteries. It remains today in remarkably good condition. The location of Daifuku and its position relative to Elon's other batteries reveal a formidable coastal bulwark that helped Japan's military keep a close watch on adjacent sea waters and muster a formidable defense against any attempted naval landing. Reinforced concrete, however, was not invulnerable to intense artillery bombardment. Thus, Japan also concealed a defensive row of tunnel-connected batteries under Elon's low elevation line of inland hills. Hilltop gun emplacements all enjoyed clear views of the plain and coastline below. All was thus ready for the Allies to make their move. The multi-day Formosa air battle took place in mid-October 1944. This engagement included intensive U.S. bombing over ports and airfields across Taiwan, done in order to keep Taiwan-based troops out of the forthcoming Battle of Leyte in the Philippines. Crippling and disastrous Allied air attacks led the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy Air Services to start building smaller-scale, hidden airfields. In Elon, Kiran West Aerodrome, the most remote of these hidden airfields, was built on land now occupied by rice fields and the Cavalon Whiskey Distillery. Giran Aerodrome occupied all of this. The Cavalon Whiskey Building is just the middle part. What's in front here all the way to those fields and over to the trees. The runway wasn't wide, 
about the same as a freeway. The command post used to be around where the Cavalon Whiskey Building is now. A plane would take off, walk back to pay respects to the command post, and then fly out to sea. None returned. In the waning months of war, Elon was home to three aerodromes. Despite concealment efforts, all had been marked and photographed by U.S. aerial reconnaissance. From the American perspective, Elon posed a direct threat in terms of its roles in sustaining and projecting Japanese air power in the Pacific and sending kamikaze pilots against U.S. warships. In the morning of January 3, 1945, Allied planes appeared over the skies of Elon before the air raid sirens had time to blare. Their primary target was the Taiwan Kokyo paper mill, today the site of Zhongxin Cultural and Creative Park. I just heard an E sound, and then my ears went deaf. I couldn't hear anything for a long time after that. The sound knocked me completely out. When I woke up, what? What happened to the roof, I thought. The roof was missing. I just heard a machine-like sound, thought the explosion was because of some mechanical problem. Had no idea it was an American bomb. A co-worker saw me in trouble saw that my pants were all torn up and the blood on my legs. He picked me up and carried me outside. After we were out, the planes came back again. He set me down in a castor bean field, provided good camouflage. He hid me there and then went to tell the others we were safe. There used to be an air raid shelter outside this window here. Could hold a few hundred people. Let a few hundred people hide. But... Why no air raid alarm that day? That was just wrong. My father came to see me, saw me lying there. He lifted the cloth to see my leg. I was conscious. My father was looking at me with tears streaming from his eyes. War is truly a cruel thing. Why are we willing to sacrifice the lives of millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions to war? Many died in the January 3rd attack. Those who survived have continued to carry physical and mental scars from that attack. For Elon, this air raid marked the first of many to come. The Americans continued their attacks in the skies over Elon, looking to disrupt transportation, damage factories, and stop the flow of Japanese soldiers to Iwo Jima. Brutal bombings and strafing put everyone in regular mortal danger. Family gatherings were extremely difficult, or it upended everyone's normal. After Taiwan's Japanese residents had been drafted, other youth, both indigenous and Chinese, were conscripted and sent to Pacific battlefields. Everyone attended send-offs. Happily off to war, happy to return. When they came back, it was Mogon no Gaisen, the silent triumph. They came back in white boxes, a box covered with a white cloth. Bones were inside. The mayor of Ilan, the chief of Lodong, they'd go to the families and praise the brave sacrifice made by the husband and father to his country. We all are proud of you and present you with his ashes. Families didn't cry, just accepted the ashes. After everyone had gone, the ashes were placed on the tatami mat. The rice paper doors on all sides were drawn shut, and the tears began. 
Wives dared cry only in private on their tatami. They didn't dare cry in front of others. Not even one teardrop. Nearly all of the over 20,000 Japanese soldiers on Iwo Jima were dead by the time the island fell to the Americans in March 1945. The Allies commenced the Battle of Okinawa in April. Japanese forces met the attack both on land and with suicide attacks on the enemy fleet from the air. Japan stationed its new Kamikaze Special Attack Force in Ilan. Lifting off from Giron South or West Aerodromes, Kamikaze planes would turn and fly east out over Kisanto into the Pacific, never to return. Official records show that a total of 81 Kamikaze pilots took off from Milan. 11 were below the age of 20. In Ilan, the kamikaze stayed at inns. They ate whatever they wanted, ate very well, could ask for just about anything, whatever they desired. Really young, all of them. <laughs> just 17 or 18 years old. Like I said, they left for the front as soon as they could fly. They only learned to fly, didn't need to learn to dogfight, nothing like that. They'd take off in groups, as long as they could fly. They had no fuel by the time they met up with the enemy. They weren't coming back, so why pack extra fuel? Under such conditions, they still fought. Only at the very end did the Japanese admit they'd lost the battle. During the Battle of Okinawa, the Allies continued to pummel Taiwan from the air hoping to crush Japanese air power on the island and weaken public resolve. An air raid involving over 100 planes took place on May 31, 1945. 24 of these targeted Elon, causing the worst damage of the war in that area. At the time, I was cutting grass for the army on Mount Junto. I looked out over Ilan. Wow, so many bombs, so much smoke, blotted out the sky. I looked over at a Japanese classmate. His face went completely pale and he was shaking like a leaf. We went home afterward. His grandma's body was in pieces. His family's Nakayama Dental Clinic received a direct hit. The air raid shelter too. His grandma's head had been thrown 50 meters away. Elan was hit really bad on May 31st. Hundreds died and buildings were in ruins. A house was hit that day too. I hungered down in a shelter with my dad and mom, eight in all. All of us piled into the air raid shelter. All of a sudden, boom, it was sold out. We all thought it had hit the army base behind us. The planes then flew off. We decided it was safe to leave. And my father, he pushed on the door. What the? The door was a sturdy one. But when we'd gone in, it had opened easily. Now, it wouldn't budge. We kept pushing on it. Some people on the outside saw something happening. They discovered the door was moving and that our family's shelter had been spared. Oh. If the bomb had landed three meters closer, we'd all have been dead. This is a clock from an airplane instrument panel, perhaps owned by a flight staff or a uniformed pilot. We were never sure which guests it was. The air raids demolished everything. This is all that was spared. It doesn't work anymore, but it used to still run. Raids continued through June. Secondary school students were enlisted as student soldiers 
and trained to fight in the expected Allied landing. Ilan's Gakotohe were trained near Mount Janto. Every day, digging trenches, air raid shelters, everyday grenade throwing practice. They give us lunge mines to fight U.S. tanks. One night, on a pitch black sea, lights lit up suddenly. Red lights, row after row. A U.S. warship was passing by Taiwan, passed right off the Ilan coast, just like that. We saw it. The Battle of Okinawa ended after three months of bitter fighting and the deaths of over 100,000 Japanese soldiers and civilians and over 80,000 Allied soldiers. It was the deadliest battle of the Pacific War. It left the heavily fortified island of Okinawa in complete ruins. How would history have changed if the Allies had decided to land first on Taiwan? On August 15, 1945, after the U.S. had dropped two atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan surrendered unconditionally. The Second World War and the Pacific War were, at long last, over. The war's end also ended Japan's colonial rule in Taiwan. Control over Taiwan was turned over to the Republic of China. Today, the military heritage sites, unscarred by war, that still dot Elon's landscape, testify to Taiwan's World War II experience. Air raids during the Iwo Jima and Okinawa campaigns were part of the price that Taiwan paid to avoid an Allied invasion. The war ended with no invasion of Taiwan. Taiwan was spared becoming a battlefield. Even so, the war left a deep scar on the lives of so many. A scar that, despite the passage of time, remains vivid and painful. The war had ended, but difficult decades still lay ahead before Taiwan would achieve today's peace and democracy. Why do we humans march so willfully into war? Can't we instead choose a stable and lasting peace? War, it sucked up all resources, very much a waste. What we need today is peaceful dialogue. That's how it must be. Don't rely on military force. Can you even imagine how many people would die? We absolutely cannot have another war. War is a wretched affair. Don't impulsively start a war, it's terrible. Our family suffered directly because of the war. Five years to rebuild our house, borrowing from here and there. Ah. Two or three years after the end of the war, my Japanese classmate found. Hideo, he said. Two of our classmates joined the kamikaze and are dead now. Did you know? I couldn't stop the tears flowing. I said, Yoshino, I'm so sorry. I will never scorn your name again. You sacrificed for your country, gave your loyalty. I cannot scorn you for that. Please rest in peace. Harmony should be sought in every relationship. When everyone's okay, that's good, right? If we're all trying to get some advantage, I think there's no value in that. <laughs> 